Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Cadence Independent Media Production. Today, we are discussing unison head tuning on our toms. What we gain, what we lose, why we might or might not do this, what it does to the sound of the kit. We've done a lot of work recently with WTS drums and they're a tuning system that distributes even tension on both sides of the drum at the same time, effectively giving us unison tuning on both sides of all of the drums on the kit. If that taught us anything, it's that unison tuning is super functional, very versatile, sounds great, and is definitely something we should be thinking about in terms of getting a good sound out of the kit. Where this starts to get a little bit squirrely is with drums like the snare drum, for instance, where the mass of the two heads is significantly different. So if we're distributing even tension, we're actually not ending up with a unison tuning between the two heads. For the drums today, we are using coated G1s on the top and clear G1s on the bottom, which are, for all intents and purposes, equal mass heads. And when we go through these tuning intervals, we are going to be taking the variable of the head mass out of the equation. Let's hear these toms with both heads tuned to the same pitch through a couple of different examples. It's important for us to mention right now that for the up close single hits on each of the toms, we are eliminating the sound of the close mics because we don't want to have any kind of interaction that's overly displaying the batter head versus the rezzo. This issue will become much more present when we move to a wider interval between the toms later on in the second tuning. To sum up, this is a great sound. They sound like drums. They're ringing out beautifully. They have nice attack. They have nice tone. There's nothing wrong with this at all. Where we run into trouble is the idea that we're supposed to tune toms a certain way or that this is a prescription for a good tom sound, throwing out all other variables that there possibly could be. Now on the other side of the fence, we do have to address the fact that there are a lot of people out there who say that this is a limiting tuning, that this isn't usable, that this is going to tear apart the fabric of the universe if we just tune both heads to the same pitch. It's ridiculous. It sounds good. And honestly, ask yourself, if I hadn't told you that they were tuned to the same pitch, would you have known? Would you have even hazarded a guess? Now more to the point. If you are a person who is either avoiding this tuning because you think it's wrong or because you think they won't sound good, we need to also address that if you are really married to this tuning, we should also experiment with changing these intervals up because there are things we gain and things we lose with every single version of an interval between the two heads on a tom. What we're now going to do is lower the batter tension a little bit, raise the reso tension a little bit, bring us back to the same overall fundamental pitch, but instead we're going to have a different interval between the two heads.
where we landed with this tom is a perfect fourth interval between the rezzo and the batter head. The rezzo is higher, the batter is lower. When players talk about tuning a rezzo higher, this is the kind of sound that they're talking about achieving. It's important to note that the fundamental is the same. The note that the drum is producing when we strike it and we hear that note, it's the same because the two heads are working together, but now a little bit further apart in terms of pitch to still generate the same note. This is exactly why we chose to omit the close mic for the single hits because this is going to sound in the close mic like there's a lower pitch happening because the batter head is a lower pitch, but the overall fundamental is the same. Now let's check out the single hit demos back to back. The character difference here is not super dramatic, but it is there and it is a choice that we might want to make depending on the gig, depending on the style, depending on what we're trying to produce, or if we're struggling with the way the drum is behaving in a certain space, a different room, a different venue, anything like that. For me personally, when I'm tuning up a drum for a performance or to practice or anything like that, this interval is not something that I'm thinking about. What I'm looking for is a sound that I want to hear and I just explore the two heads until I have it. After all these years, I can do that fairly quickly. I do still run into challenges sometimes. We all will run into challenges sometimes, whether it's a crosstalk issue between the drums or some kind of funny business going on with the space that we're playing in. But the bottom line is, I don't ever start with the idea that the drum should be tuned a certain way and then work backward from there. I start with the idea of a performance and a sound in mind, and then I generate the sound with the drum, and I'm oftentimes surprised at the interval or the ratio that I end up with with the pitches between the heads. Additionally, it's worth noting that I don't keep track of any of that stuff afterward. I don't have a prescription book or anything like that for what worked on a given day because honestly, every gig is a little bit different and I want the best thing for that day with those people in that room rather than starting with a prescription to deviate from. Now let's talk about some variables that we haven't discussed yet in this in length that are pretty important to think about here. The first and possibly largest thing to keep in mind when we're experimenting with intervals and tuning is to remember that tension and mass and pitch all interact with each other and unless we are using heads on both sides that are the same mass, same thickness, then the same tension is not actually going to get us the same pitch on both of the heads. As a for instance, if we have a G1 on the bottom and a hydraulic on the top and we just think about tension, we're not actually going to have the same pitch between the two heads because there's so much more mass in that hydraulic. Similarly, if we tune each head to the same pitch and ignore tension, we're not going to end up with the same tension. And somewhere in between all of that is the fundamental that we're looking for. The beauty here is that if all of that is starting to feel like school and math and too complicated, we actually don't have to worry about this provided that we don't start with an intervallic prescription and instead just follow our ears. At the end of the day, the math between all of this stuff is not as important as whether or not the feel and the sound we're getting is what we're looking for. The second thing to keep in mind is that as you're hearing these demonstrations, it's important to note that we didn't retune the floor tom. The floor tom is still tuned to unison. And this brings up the fact that intervals, be they unison or any other between the two heads, are going to affect different size drums and particularly size to depth ratios completely differently. So if we have a floor tom that is happy with unison, we don't need to fuss with that. And if we have a rack tom that is hating unison, we can change it. We don't have to think that everything has to be the same all the time. Each of these are discrete instruments and they each need different things. Additionally, as a side note, if you have a drum set that has different style bearing edges throughout it, or if you're using vintage instruments that have unusual bearing edges, or you run into drums that you don't have experience with, it's another opportunity to throw prescriptions out the window and just follow your ear because each one of those things is going to change the end result.
Now that we've come to the conclusion that both of these tunings are valid, they're both usable, they're functioning in this room just fine, how do we make the choice? For me, sitting at the kit today, I'm hearing more attack and overall a slower response from the unison tuning takes up a little bit more space versus the perfect fourth tuning, which has, from where I'm sitting again, more tone, more immediacy of tone, a little less attack, rounder sound. All of these things can filter into that perhaps the fourth is better for me if I'm playing more dynamically, not hitting quite as hard. The unison might be better for if I need to carry more attack to the band or the audience or just if I'm feeling that that day in my practice room. And from where I'm sitting as well, the tone, especially with changing up the 12, got much more present and punchy and louder where I'm sitting when I moved to the perfect fourth tuning and started to give me ideas about melodic playing on that tom where before that I mostly just heard attack and I wanted to rifle through it and hit it as hard as I could. Your drums, heads, sticks will differ and these will inspire you in different ways, but Ultimately, the point is to be inspired by the choices that we're making and making sure that those choices are about making the sound that we're after and not adhering to something that someone told us to do and just running with that. The net result here is experiment with these intervals, whether you think that unisons are crazy or whether you think that unisons are the only way to go. Make sure that you try out other things. Don't be afraid. Take the time. We have lots of videos about this. It's worth backtracking and checking those out. And as always, please like, comment, subscribe, and follow the link to the Patreon below where you can help keep us alive here, get all of our extra content, symbol series, anecdotes, all of that stuff. And please let us know if you love or hate unison tunings and why. We would love to know. Mm -hmm.